Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Lucas and you are watching Cold Demons PL. Last week we built Borders T34 screen version and today we will paint it with some typical Russian green colors. All building was easy and quite fast and I am sure that this kit was a perfect choice to start on this channel. This one is not my first T34 and I have some experience how it should look and what tricks to use to make this replica interesting. Just look at these beasts from my past. The first is Su-100 tank destroyer presented as a captured one with some German features. The Creation Demon is upgraded version with T-55 wheels and M2 Browning on the turret. German flag field conversion which was served in Schwere Panzerjager Abteilung 653. Next we have standard Soviet warhorse which I put on diorama called From Russia with Love. The Winter Wars Su 122 Warhammer with impressive amount of stowage. And Late War Berlin Conqueror with extra Tomanet shirts. So I think that this one will be a nice addition to my collection. Let's get cracking! First of all, we have to disassemble the entire model into basic elements to have easier access to all nooks and crannies. For the purposes of photos and movie presentation I made the model dry fitted with blue tack, which is almost as important as other tools at the modeling workbench. The individual elements such as towing cables, wheels or trucks are easier to paint separately. And later weathering is also more convenient when these elements are not glued to the model. And here's how our model looks like after disassembling into the basic elements. To avoid touching the parts while painting I attached almost of them to the wooden sticks. For this purpose I used blue tack again especially where no holes were available. The interior parts of the turret were strong enough to keep the stick stable. You probably find it a bit risky but believe me during the entire painting process this solution worked without any problems. For some parts like the antenna for example I have prepared special mounting holes in bamboo spikes. In the case of wheels I use the existing axle holes which is always the simplest solution. Some parts require special handling so a hole in an invisible place will certainly be helpful to install a wooden handle in it. Now a small trick. If we don't have any special tool for hold the model during painting we can stick a standard nut in the hole to use the bolt as a holder. Use the super glue. After all with a few drops of debonder we can remove the nut from the kit. Or leave it there, it shouldn't annoy anyone. This is how all the parts prepared for the primer look like. Now the model is ready to be washed, in this original sense of course. I always use water with few drops of dishwashing liquid. The soft and large brush is essential so I'm sure no detail will come off during this spa. It is better to spend a little more time thoroughly washing the model than be surprised when the paint doesn't stick well to the surface. Of course. After washing the model must be completely dried so that unexpected drops of water don't make painting difficult. Because I decided to use AK paints I reached for the real colors book to check the shades that will look best on my model. We have list of all the shades used by the Red Army with a brief explanation of the primers and camo used during the war. I started painting by applying my favorite black primer straight from the can. In the open air it dries quite quickly and soon after that I was able to start painting. In the first row I colored the rubber rims. I used for this a special shade called rubber black. It has little in common with black, it's more dark grey, but it's assumed that the tires are black so probably this is why it is called in this way. Now you can see how useful long sticks for fastening the wheels are. Thanks to them you can manipulate with the part in all directions. Russians use red oxide primers on their vehicles the same like Germans. That's why I use a proven mixture of colors to prepare the base for the model. Generally I mix these colors in 1 to 1 proportion. This mixture is perfect for red oxide and only a couple drops of thinner is needed for proper flow through the airbrush nozzles. In order to not waste the time painting the entire model I focused on the chassis. All wheels, lower hull and side shields were covered with several thin layers of red primer. You may be wondering why the armor panels were also painted. The answer is very simple. 
The contrast after spraying the right green color will be evident enough in comparison to the rest of the hull. Now it's time to deal with the wheels. As you probably remember I ordered quick wheel mask to paint them super thoroughly and what is the most important very quickly. Thanks to use of this tool it will be possible and definitely faster than using a brush or any other tool. Maybe for some of you it's a bit controversial but in the future I will try to explain the advantages of this solution. Applying the wheels and using the mask is as simple as Lego blocks. While painting the mask due to the concave shape it's necessary to spray the paint from all sides to avoid the unpainted corners. Just rotate the tool and spray from different directions. However, the most important thing is to put a good primer to avoid the situation when the masking tape damage already applied paint during removing the wheels from the holes. The first shade of green was Protective K. I use it without any brightening additives, only with a thinner. The wheels were still sitting in the quick wheel mask, so I started with them making the same rotating like before during the red primer application. Next I covered with this shade the hull and turret where two thin coat of paint did the job. Once the paint was dry I could start applying the worn effect. Two thin layers were enough for what I intended to achieve. All surfaces, both those covered with green and those in red oxide, were covered with the same amount of lacquer. I didn't wait long to apply another color, which this time was protective 4BO. No exact proportion of paint and thinner was used and you can see that the consistency was quite thin. All previously painted elements were covered with this color, except for the wheels which remained in the first green layer. All because to increase the contrast between the individual sections, even if they will be covered with mud and other weathering effects at the later stages. At this point the model began to look like a real T-34. Now it's time to use the varnish that still sits between two layers of green paint. Tap water is enough to activate this solution. I started to scratch off the paint and was a bit surprised by the size of the chips, but it wasn't a problem because in these areas most of them will be covered with mud. I was able to test it without the fear that I would overdo this effect. I started doing the same on surfaces where green was previously sprayed. Here the effects were completely different. The colors were contrasting but not as much as red. The whole scratching lasted no more than 20 minutes also because the drying process was accelerated by a hair dryer. The most important thing was the final effect you can see on the model at the moment. Now you can clearly see the difference between both green shades but more spectacular is the distinction between the additional armor and the hull. Generally I don't build vehicle interiors and I try to avoid it as for me it's a waste of time. The end result is simply not worth the effort and the time spent on building this part of the model. However in this case I decided to put the crew figures in the turret so the hatch had to be open and the basic work in the interior had to be done. Even though the figures cover almost everything I couldn't leave the parts unpainted. So to paint the interior white I masked the top hole and I did the same on the bottom. Several pieces of masking tape were also used on the driver's hatch. The white is not entirely pure white because I added a few drops of ivory. This reduces the intensity of the color a bit but looks pretty good and will look even better after weathering. I used the hair dryer again to save the time. I gently took off the tape and checked where the paint came under the masking. Some little imperfections on the top were not a problem because they will be covered later with chipping. I painted the details red although I wasn't sure if this color was used there. If I remember correctly I think I saw it at Adam Wilder Marvelous T34 which he built several years ago. Nevertheless it looks cool. After the paint dried I decided to complete the driver's hatch. In an invisible place under the hinge I scratched off some paint so that the glue got a good joint. Now you can clearly see how the paint has soaked, but don't worry, everything will evaporate in a moment and not even the slightest trace will be left.
The markings time. I was wondering whether to apply the decals or paint the numbers with a brush. Both solutions have their pros and cons. For sure, the stickers applying will be faster and less stressful, but on the other hand it does not give you as many options as painting the markings by yourself. Here we have more room to show off. Some special effects can be done, but we also have to keep our brushes hard to not to spoil the previous painting. I mix the white with the ivory again and add some water. I started painting with this mixture following the example of the stickers from the set. It was not as difficult as it may seem. The good support of the hand is essential so that it doesn't hang in the air, but also a good brush and right consistency of paint will certainly be helpful. So, hold your breath. Truly speaking, painting while recording is on is stressful and uncomfortable. Additionally, the awareness that I have only one chance causes my stomach to shrink in two seconds. In order to paint the numbers, I first drew a general shape with a pencil and then started to paint. Hope you don't mind speeding up the movie a bit, but everything is clear visible and you can see how I did it. The painting was demanding as before, but I caught it on the first try. The irregular shapes look much better than the same lines offered by the model producer. And that is not an excuse, it just seemed more natural to me. I also added some extra paint stains and traces of a can that stood on the armor during painting, plus some paint spatter. And now everything is ready. It's time to paint the details. First I started adding some colors to the spotlight. However, adding colors is not a very fortunate statement because it's associated with shades other than black and silver. Here I used also a drop of satin varnish to make some plastic look of the reflectors casting. The machine gun received coated black with a little bit of silver. The metal elements of the shower was also painted with black and silver mixed together, but I also was able to see what is hidden in the special 3G set for painting tools. There are three bottles of basic shades which I tested on the shower handle and I can say that they work pretty well. My experience with the new AK color line is completely positive. Paints are great for brushing and in the airbrush they work very good. I don't want to compare them to other paints but I think that many modelers will be convinced of their quality. Yeah. It was some kind of advertisement. The base color was also applied to the exhaust pipes. To be honest, I didn't care too much about them because I planned to cover them with black pigment so some fancy rust painting is pointless. Now a slightly unnatural effect but looking pretty good on the model. All screw heads were painted silver. Yes, I know, it may look weird, but with all weather ink around it does the job. In real vehicles such elements are often rubbed off the paint and look exactly like on my model. I did the same on the wheels, even though some 90% will be covered with mud. Ok, in the end a bit of modulation. I mixed medium olive and faded green with each other more or less evenly and painted all the handles and small parts to make them brighter. Now I guess I could have used an even lighter color as the weathering toned it down and the effect was almost gone. So after all today's work I think the model looks very good. The whole thing turned out exactly as I wanted and is a good base for the next episode where we will weathering it. I especially like the base color. I'm really happy with the effect I was able to achieve. The scratches of paint give it a cool style and I'm sure the final result will be awesome. That's all I've prepared this week my friends. The model is painted with all details in primary colors. Of course, there are no trucks, but they are waiting for the weathering, which will be done in a few days. In the next episode, I will show you how to build realistic looking vehicle 
based on small amount of the products which are available on the market. Regardless of whether you are beginner or advanced, I hope you will find something interesting for yourself during these several minutes of the movie. Did you spend your time well? If so, give me a like or unlike if you think this time was wasted. Of course, it's highly recommended to subscribe to the channel, add some comments and share with others. It's really important to me to have some positive kick to develop the channel. Check my Instagram and blog, links are in description. Thanks for watching, see you next time, cheers! Check my Instagram and blog, links are in description. <laughs> <laughs>